Hey guys, Mrs. Gatch here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you today how to use Lightroom Classic CC um, on your laptop. We are going to learn how to uh, import our photos as well as just some very basic kind of editing techniques and some things that I really enjoy doing and then also how to export them in really room and your name conventions. Um, you could either have photos that you have already saved on your computer or ones that we're gonna be importing from the camera. Just make sure that they are uh, raw, okay? That's what we're gonna be working with editing with. All right, let's get started. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get started. To begin, you wanna make sure that you're picking the right uh, Adobe app because there are so many. Some of you might see uh, this one or Lightroom CC. The one that we want to choose for sure is Adobe Light, uh, Lightroom Classic CC because you need to have um, a Creative Cloud account for this one and we don't have one, so make sure you pick this one. And we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Sometimes it might take a little bit of time. It is quite a big file. And so uh, while we're waiting for this to open up here, it's always really good to make sure that you're going into editing, understanding that it is a bit of a process and it's always going to be one that is gonna take a little bit of time, but you should invest that time in making sure all of your photos are edited because it really comes out to be amazing in the end. So there are um, different sections here. We have library, we have develop. These are the two that we are going to be uh, hanging out in. Library is where you guys have to start in order to ah, go away, um, imp uh, import them. So we're gonna go down here on the lower left-hand side where it says import. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop my SD card in. If you're importing with using the cord from the camera, um, you just make sure your camera's on and then this device will show up. So. We'll go right up here. Now, when you import it, you guys are gonna get all of the pictures that everybody has taken um, within the class. So you have to be really mindful about just scrolling through and finding which ones are yours. I always make it a point to hit uncheck all and then that way I don't accidentally import any of them. And I think I looked through here a little bit and I saw that I'm just gonna import one or two from some students just so I can edit them and then we'll get started. So I think I liked this one and this one. And one good thing is like you could see them small or if you decide to go larger, it'll show them here, but I don't think it always shows them at such a good um, quality. So that's just kind of an idea. All right, and then maybe we'll just get to some nice flowers. These are just a ton of student photos. I'm not quite sure what was on these. So when you guys are ready to Import, you have your picture selected, make sure they're checked and it's just very easy. You have the option to import. All right, there you go. Please be very mindful that right up here where it says copy and import photos, that is done. That entire bar is filled and that's how you know it's safe to eject your um, SD card or unplug your camera or turn it off because the, the program is done with it. Okay, so here they all are. Now we don't necessarily need to be in the library anymore. We can go ahead and now go into develop. When you go into develop, um, Lightroom CC has a lot going on here. So on the left hand, here you have kind of your view screen. Um, you can see what's going on in your navigator. It almost gives you like a preview of what things might look like, anything that's large up there. We have different presets. So this happens to be closed. You can just open it right up and then see all the different ones that Adobe has put in for you, which, and you can even import some of your own. What we're mostly gonna be working on over here is um, the basic kind of developing panel. Cause remember, it's almost like we're developing film. That's where that concept comes from. So we're gonna start out. Um, I will go ahead and just scroll through here. Now what I certainly like to do when I'm going through my photos is there are some options on Adobe where you could either flag something as picked or you can reject it. There's um, And that way that also almost helps you organize stuff. So for example, this picture here was a little bit blurry. So if I hit X, it'll set it as rejected and it kind of like grays it out. Um, and then if I really like one someone, I can hit the letter P and then it picks it. Or you could just leave it alone. So this one here, I'm like, oh, maybe it's not exactly what I'm seeking out. And then I'm gonna pick this one as well. And then what's really nice is that you can then sort out your filters. So if I turn this one on, it's only gonna choose the ones that were picked. And those are the ones that I probably wanna edit. I can turn off that filter. And then if I wanted to, let's say, delete a bunch of pictures very quickly that I had rejected, I can go here, do Command A, Control Click, Remove Photos, 
And because I want to save as much space on my uh, laptop as possible, I just delete them from the disk because they're still on my SD card. So I will uncheck the filter and then now let's go ahead and work with these. Not necessarily, this is everyone's different workflow. You don't have to do it, but I like to organize and go through all the photos that I want first before I start editing. But that could be something perhaps you do at the end. So you're gonna find that you do something that works well for you. So when you're getting started with editing your picture, there's different ways that you guys can sort out and do things. Um, cropping is always a really good one to start with. It could save a picture with its composition. Um, so you go ahead and hit that and it's gonna give you our nice little grid overlay. You need to make sure to pay attention to the aspect and that the aspect is locked, okay? If it's unlocked, then you have this, I mean, it could be the, the ability to go ahead and crop your picture however you like. But then if you wanna print it, it's not really gonna work out well. So you wanna make sure to lock your aspect ratio. And if you open it up, it gives you a lot of different options or you can enter a custom one. Let's say if you wanted to print something for like an Ikea photo. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with this with as shot, which is usually about two by three or four by six. And I'll crop in a little bit more, kind of fill that frame. And then once you feel right with something, you just go ahead and hit enter. The good thing is, is nothing is very permanent. If I wanted to undo, just command Z. It would go ahead and do that, then I'll just redo my crop. Um, then what you guys can do is get into a lot of the fun stuff here. So I usually like to start out with looking at my white balance. Remember we talked about white balance in class, just kind of the temperature of um, your picture. You could go auto and it will fix it a bit there, or if you wanted to have fun and see some of the other ones, they're there, but for the most part, you can control it a lot better by just going through the temperature one. So I go to as shot and then here I will work if I wanna make mine a little bit cooler or more warm. And you also have your tint, which makes things either green, very green or very like red purple. If you accidentally do something where it's like you go all the way to the edge, a little trick is if you click on the number, just I mean, actually double click on the word tint or whatever it is, it'll reset it to what it was supposed to be, which is a nice little trick. So I'm gonna make this a little bit more blue. I'm not gonna to touch too much on the greens here because there's another one that you can use to adjust your stuff. So now we work with exposure, right? So exposure has to deal with how bright or dark something is. I usually like to maybe just underexpose my pictures a little bit if I wanted to brighten an area, I can do that as well later. Um, contrast has to do, either if I put it all the way down, it has that matte look, M-A-T-T-E. That tends to be very popular now I think I'm visco and stuff and I pump it all the way up. It almost has like a very high definition, like HDR look. And so I'm gonna actually bump up the contrast a little bit, give it a bit more depth. Um, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks are basically what they sound like. If I bump up the highlights a lot, it's gonna really brighten the whites uh, or the lights in the photo. If I turn it all the way down, it dims them. So highlights and whites are good to pay attention to when you are doing portraiture, if you wanna brighten people's faces. If I turn my shadows all the way down, it messes with like the dark part. So you kind of, it's very intuitive. Um, you have to decide what look it is you want for your photo. There's no exact formula for how to best edit your picture. It's the look that you're going for. So I'm gonna go and speed through here now, adjust the white and blacks. And then now we get into presence, which is one that I really like working with. Clarity will either make things super blurry, like soften them up, or it can go really, really harsh where it defines a lot of things. Be careful when you use, especially in people's faces, unless you wanna have the very, something that picks up all the small details, really sharpens everything in your pictures, but you also don't wanna make it look like a precious moment stall, right? So for landscapes, obviously clarity is one that if you wanna bump up, you can get more details in those pictures. Dehaze, pretty straightforward. If you have a very hazy picture, you can try to mess around with it. Um, I think it is, just one that you need to use when you need to use it, but this is not a hazy photo. Now, vibrance and saturation are always um, tools that I enjoy using. Saturation 100% deals with the color, so either like turn it all the way up or you can put it all the way down, and then it takes away your color like 100%. You have to be careful with saturation. You don't want to oversaturate things. Sometimes it can just look a little bit like cartoonish or just too bright. Um, I usually then like to mess a little bit with the vibrance because it does color and light, and I think it looks really, really nice. Um, tone curve, we might get into another time, maybe when we learn how to edit our portraits. Um, it's just a little bit more specific about editing certain parts. 
One that I really enjoy using actually is your Hue Saturation Luminance. Um, just because what I really think is cool is that it'll take a certain picture, like a certain at color, and then you can really work with that. So for example, I have my greens here. So if I'm working with hue, there's different hues of green. So I can make it either like really yellow green or like a blue green green. Um, but if, same with saturation, I can really turn down the saturation of the green or I can turn it all the way up and it's just really bright. It probably would work better in a picture like this so you can see a bit of the contrast. So only the green here is what's getting brighter or it can go really down. And that's just a nice aspect of something to fun to work with if you ever wanted to. And then luminance just has to be with how dark or bright, like a, a lit something is. So if you wanted to bump that up a little bit or turn it down, it's really up to you. I'm, we're not gonna be messing with split toning here, so I'm actually gonna close it. Lens corrections. Um, Go ahead and leave that alone too. I like to mess with it whenever I'm doing portraits. If you just wanted to get an idea of what happens when you remove the chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections, it just kind of like flattens out um, that fisheye look that comes when you use certain lenses, but no need to use it. So I'll close that as well. And we'll leave transform here. If you wanted to add a vignette, you could, there's one of two ways that you could do it. You can actually scroll to the left where the panels are and vignette is when you get the really nice kind of dark uh, burned edge uh, outline, darker outline, wait, darker kind of focus on the picture so it highlights what's in the center more. Um, so you could work with this, obviously. It can be a lot or it could be a little. And also, remember, it's gonna either go like super dark or with super white, and I do not like white very much. You can mix where the, mid, the midpoint is. You can see what's happening there and then the roundness, if it's like more oval, etc. Lots of things for you guys to do. So that's just very much the develop um, like panel in regards to color, light, etc. Now, other tools that I really enjoy using is the adjustment brush and also just a different, the healing tool, but we're gonna get more into those when we learn how to edit our self portraits, okay? So for right now, just stick where the crop box is and then the basic editing tool and little by little will work with adding in more knowledge of tools. When you guys are ready to export your pictures, the way, uh, it's very specific that you guys follow some simple rules. One is that you export them the right way and that you also follow a naming convention because it makes it very much easier for me when you turn them in to give you credit and also organize them in a certain way. So when I'm ready to edit my photos, I could either pick the one, to select all of them, obviously you could do Command A, or, if I, there were certain ones that I wanted that were in a row, I, I can hold, click one, hold down, command, and then click the ones that I want to choose and get ready to export. But you have to make sure you have all the ones selected that you want to export into JPEG form. You're going to go ahead and go into File, Export, and then this is going to bring up a different series of categories. So the first one, and I'm gonna work my way down uh, this list, is we'll go to Export Location. You can decide where the pictures go. You can, if you have them on your desktop, you wanna put them on your home folder, what I really like to do is, it doesn't matter where you put it, but I like to put it in a subfolder that pertains to the category of the picture that, um, of, of the photo shoot or whatever we're learning. So I'm gonna title this one composition. I type this here. Um, or let's say if I was doing shutter speed, so I would put shutter speed and name that there and it'll automatically export it to that particular file in that particular area. So I'll be able to find this here on my desktop. Now the file naming is really, really important. So let me tell you how this is gonna go. Um, I like to do a custom name and then a sequence. And the naming convention that you guys are gonna follow, which will be really helpful for both organizing your photos and for having me organizing them and know whose picture it is, is to go like this. So you're gonna do your first name and then your last name, so Ana Maria Gatch underscore, you're gonna put what block you're in, so I would put, let's say, A block, and then underscore whichever semester you are in. So then I would put spring 2019 or SP 2019, okay? Now, this is always going to be the custom text that you use um, because it will really help in 
or as I said, organizing everything for both for you and for me. So it's easy to search up when I drop them into Google Drive. So make sure it's your first and last name, underscore, what block you're in, underscore, and then which semester you're in. You could do custom name sequence, or you could do custom name, original file number, and then it'll just add it onto there. So this would be what it would look like. Uh, I know it seems like it's really long, but trust me, this is a naming convention I want you to follow, and it's something I expect from you. Now for your file settings, you wanna make sure that you're exporting your image to JPEG, the color space is sRGB, and you can export the quality anyway between 60 to 70% because we print the, export these out quite large. So I'll just go ahead and do 60. Image resizing, don't have to worry about this or sharpening. Um, and the last one I really want you to spend time doing in is this watermarking part, okay? It might look like this right now, simple copyright watermark, but you can actually edit it so it is your name. And then when we print it out, and also when we feature them, all of the pictures already have your copyrighted name and you get the rightful credit. So to edit it, you're gonna go to edit copy, edit watermarks. Take a little bit of time to open up. And then you're gonna see here exactly what the watermark looks like. I would suggest you, um, you're gonna be writing your entire first and last name and pick a font that is baby, the very like strong, um, bold font and the one that I would like for you guys to use is Babis New. It's my favorite font of all time if you guys have ever had me. All right, it looks like this. Oh, I picked the wrong one. Okay, very clear. And then you don't need to have a shadow and you can decide the where it goes. You can put it on the left or you can put it on the right and you're gonna write your entire name. So here we go, Anna Maria Gatch. And you wanna make sure you fix the inset a little bit so I would say put it up to about three, and then you can see here where it's gonna go. And then once you guys hit um, save, it's always gonna be there. So I'll title this uh, copyright, although I made one already. You can just put your name, and then from now on, all the pictures that you export are going to have that on there. For post-processing, you don't have to do anything, or sometimes what people like to do is, once it's done, you hit show in Finder, and you'll see that it'll open it up in Finder. So we'll hit export. And one thing that's really important, guys, is don't close Lightroom or do anything until this lovely little box here is absolutely filled and gone. It's important that you do that, okay? So let's give it another second, and then you're gonna see they pop right up in there and you can see where the files are. And if I open it up, you can see my picture with the name on it. This one here might be a little bit more difficult to see, but no, it all worked out. So once you guys are done, these are the pictures you will drop into a Google Classroom. If you need any help, you know that I'm here. You can email me, I'll be walking around the classroom. Um, but for the most part, take this time to experiment and work with what you got. Good luck.